Hi, today I'm going to talk about insulating and planning ahead. Right now I'm at my own house. This is the big project where I'm doubling the size of my garage, but I'm not just doubling the size of my garage to put an additional vehicle in. See that, that's where the vehicles are going to stay. But this room in the back is gonna be a workshop. So if you're gonna build, build a workshop, you have to think about what's the function going to be and how is it going to be used. In this case, this is going to be an insulated area and we're going to, uh, I'm gonna to want to make sure that it stays cool in the summer or at least as cool as possible. I'm not planning on, on cooling this in the summer, but also in the winter time when I heat it, what's the best way that I can do that and make the roof last as long as I can. Well, to do so, what I did was uh, I started out by putting vent uh, vents on the outside. And if you look at the soffit right up here, this is a hidden vent soffit. Actually, air can get in there. And the nice thing is if you look up here, over here is where it's coming in. And it can travel between the rafters all the way up to the top. Now in the top, if you'll note, you'll notice that there is a triangular area right up there. That's very small, um, but all of the air can travel from those areas in between the rafters all the way up into that triangle. The beautiful thing about that is if you look over here, you'll actually see there's a spinning vent. That's a turbine vent. And that turbine vent is going to, uh, is going to suck enough air for this entire, this entire garage area. Now you'll see, if you look real closely over there, you'll see that the turbine is spinning. And we're gonna talk about the, uh, the house wrap on this, uh, on this build in another episode. Uh, but you'll also notice that we've got the walls are built with, uh, with two by six and two by eight construction. Uh, we're also sealing those areas um, where the where the uh, CDX plywood meets the OSB because we don't want it to we don't want to lose air. There's a couple areas we're going to go around and hit just to give an example. This area this could be a place where you lose energy and that is a uh, that's a, a big problem. Um, this is a triple pane window that we're going to be putting in here. I'm putting this in on the south side because that's where uh, the south side is going to get the most light for the largest percentage of the day. This is a nine foot door, so we're not going to use this as our main door. Um, so that's going to stay, stay uh, closed most of the time. And this is going to be uh, the man door where uh, where you can, uh, where you can just enter and go in from the main garage. Now, how's this gonna be insulated uh, while maintaining ventilation? Because that's gonna be key here. In the best case scenario, you'd probably just spray foam it because spray foam has an R value of seven per inch, but spray foam is fairly ridiculously expensive and you can't really do it this time of year easily without heating the whole space. The reason for that is because spray foam is actually a two-part system. It's made from a combination of poly, two canisters, one being polyisocyanide and the other one being a foaming agent. Uh, and those are best, uh, you get the best lift when it's between 70 and 80 degrees. Obviously here in Wisconsin, looking out there, we're, it's going to be quite a while before we have that. But we want to be able to uh, to have these walls well insulated. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to put end up putting uh, uh, fiberglass in between uh, in between here. We're going to put up uh, put up a fabric, and then I have an industrial blower. We're going to blow this whole cavity full, and uh, you'll see you'll note if you you look real closely, you'll see in a couple places where the foam is actually pulled away. Uh, from the studs, that means that we're going to have to refoam that when it gets a little bit warmer out. Uh, it doesn't make any sense right now to try and foam this uh, in, in these sorts of temperatures. Uh, the first foaming was uh, was mo took care of 90% of the areas, but we really want to finish this up and make this uh, like a, a big insulated cooler so this doesn't cost a lot to heat in the wintertime. 
Speaking of heat, we also have to think about things like, well, if we're going to heat it, how is it going to be heated? And this one is going to be uh, with a, you'll notice that, that I had a, a plumber run a gas line there, uh, and that gas line is going to go across the yard, and uh, and it's going to, uh, then we can have a, a normal kind of industrial type or hanging heater here in the garage. Now, when we talk about, talked a little bit about planning ahead here, that's really important because when you have a build like this, it's not cheap. Uh, and if you plan ahead, you can really end up saving yourself some money. Now, for the most part, this, his, this garage has been impeccably planned. And in fact, even the garage floor uh, underneath that, there is uh, two inches of foam. So, the, uh, so that creates a thermal break. So the cold air is not going to come up from the ground and freeze this space as easily. So it's going to stay warmer. But one of the th things that you have to kind of keep in mind is that technology is are con technologies are constantly changing. Um, and, uh, and as such, you want to be adaptable. Now in this garage, we have several different areas where we have outlets every couple of feet where, uh, where we may want, I may want to have a tool plugged in. I have an outlet. Uh, but one thing that I didn't think of that I was, I'm kind of beating myself up for is what if electrical vehicles become the norm? Now, let's face it, electrical vehicles are much more energy efficient. Um, in, uh, for 95% of consumers, it makes a whole lot of sense because you can go 400 miles and most people don't drive 400 miles in a week. Um, uh, some people don't even drive that in a month, but some people, most people don't drive 400 miles in a week. Uh, and, uh, so if it would be nice to be able to just kind of pull into your own garage and plug in and not have to worry about, about fueling up. So, uh, what we'll be doing here, I'm going to put my hand through here and this is where the, the truck is right now. This is in the, the area that is the, the, the original garage, um, is we're gonna go ahead and, and add in a, a, a place here where we can plug in a vehicle. That will make it so that rather than worrying about the fluctuations of fossil fuels, we can just go ahead and, uh, and plug in and, and we could even put solar, a solar array on the, uh, on the roof of this if we like. Anyway, so uh, I hope that that's helped. Um, one of the other key things that I, I did want to kind of convey here is that by putting up the ceiling here uh, and with that little triangle, yes, we're getting the air in that's coming in from the soffit in this area. But if you look around here into the original garage, uh, you'll, you'll see that that, that, array, that that little triangle continues in there. So by having this, uh, this one, by having this one uh, turbine vent, it's actually going to suck the air in from this other part of the garage as well, keeping the whole space nice and cool in the summertime, making it more comfortable and also extending the life of the roof. I hope this has helped and stay tuned for our next episode.